Welcome to the Anime Research Society podcast, brought to you by CG Magazine and the Pixels Inc. podcast. Our mission, to explore the depths of anime, the good, the bad, and the absolutely insane. We'll take a look at some of the best and the worst of the season and give you some of our recommendations to lead you on your own research journey. I'm your host, Lisa Mior, and joining us today are our extremely awesome panel of experts, Cole Watson. Back by popular demand. Oh, we missed you, Cole. How are you doing? Uh, pretty good, pretty good here in Newfieland. Yeah, it's, you're very far. It's not, yes. not great, not great. And we also have Preston Doza. Now in Technicolor. <laughs> Where are you, Preston? Uh, I'm doing all right. Um, the most anime thing of 2019 will be coming out in a few days from recording, so I'm very looking, much looking forward to it. Um, and what would that be? Why, Kingdom Hearts 3, of course. Oh, I thought it was going to be the Sega Bass Fishing movie again. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Sega Bass. Oh, there's that, too. Uh, that's also pretty anime, but uh, King, no, Kingdom Hearts. Okay, all right, fair, fair point. And finally, that leads us to Remington Joseph. How are you doing, Remington? I'm good. We're alive again. We're we are. Alive. Yeah, <laughs> we, we had a little bit of a break for a couple months. Yeah, we went so into a coma. Yeah, apologies, listeners. It was a very long hi- unannounced hiatus, but we are back uh, with a brand new episode. And it's a very special episode to wrap up the torture that was 2018. We have got the best of 2018. So we're going to look past uh, back at the past season and try to figure out the best and the worst of this season. There were a lot of the worst. So we're going to keep that part short because that was pretty much all of our past podcasts. Yeah, we want to celebrate the good this time around. Yeah, I agree. What little there is, you got to appreciate the treasures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. But between all of us, there were a number of good shows. Like, yeah, they were just all overlapped all over the place. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> yeah. we all grabbed at the same shows and said we loved that's, them. That's really good. I mean, we had a lot. It was we came to consensus at least this year. That's Hopefully true. No 2019. more. Yeah, twenty nineteen. This is our first year. Yeah. Um. Yes. Yes. Yay for cool. consensus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That means we're expert reviewers, right? That's that's what uh, that of means. Course. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So why don't we get started? I think what we're gonna just do is just say our own personal best this year, um, and figure it out from that point. So Cole, why don't you get started? Okay. Uh one that I think appeared in all of our lists before we started recording this was a little dandy called Megalobox. And uh this show has become really special for me going into 2019 where the dub is actually starting up where now me and my dad are actually watching this together so oh, it's nice. actually yeah it's actually really and the charming dub's good the dub's actually pretty good yeah uh like dad he just jumped in because he's like whoa mad max meets rocky i'm like yeah what you want to watch yeah let's go for it and so <laughs> To, to bring someone in who doesn't, like, really consume this art form or doesn't really, like, spend time in it, like, we're having a lot of fun with it. Uh, but Megalobox especially was just, it was the, I want to say, 50th anniversary of Ashita no Jo, a celebration mm-hmm. of that, which was a great, phenomenal series back in the day. And so Megalobox just really uh, continues that with uh, really cool characters that all exist in this kind of like post-apocalyptic world. And they, one of the key factors that I really love is that there's not really a villain to this show. Everyone exists in like this morally gray area and they're all shackled to something. That's a big theme in this is that everyone is chained to something. They're all leashed to something like a dog. And for our main protagonist, uh, Gearless Joe, that would be that he's tied down to the slums and eventually he breaks free and decides to enter into this big boxing tournament uh, called Megalonia and take on the top dog, Yuri, who is shackled to the Shirato Corporation because he has all the best augments, all the best gear, and Joe decides to fight him head on with just his fists, with just his hope and all of his training and instinct. So I love the themes of this show, and I just love, like, 
how the characters were built and the world around it. I think it's a really great series. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, we all kind of came to that same consensus when we had it on, we fe- featured it on a, an earlier episode. I'm going to look back to see which one it was, but yeah, it, it, we all kind of saw that it was one of the more in-depth pieces to actually come out this year. It's mm-hmm. a very, it's a very yeah. well-rounded show too. There's no one aspect of it that dominates the other. It's very well animated, has a rockin' soundtrack, um, yeah. and as Cole is describing the themes, the characters, and the overarching story, it's real good. It's very well written. Even yeah, if it, it is, is a an nice like, adaptation. Yeah, even if it is an adaptation of Ashitano Joe. Hmm. Well, yeah, because you don't really have to know Ashton and Joe at all to no. enjoy this. And that's the great part about it. Like, yeah. for being a celebration, you don't need to know any references or anything like that to enjoy the show. Yeah. Good I'm pick. really excited for my dad to get to the anime moments. Like, the real <laughs> anime moments. <laughs> How far are you in? Uh, so the dub just started in 2019 for Toonami, so I'm just trying to stream the episodes as they come in. I think we're on episode three now. Uh, okay. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You you are in for some <laughs> really crazy time. I can't wait for like near the finale. I don't want to spoil it for it, but like those finale <laughs> moments that like yeah. really encapsulate anime of just like why would you ever do such a thing? I wonder <laughs> how my dad's gonna react. I I think you should videotape it, and we need to include this reaction. Yeah, because some like, of these things are like the equivalent of like Rocky using the behelet to to like go back <laughs> into his prime. <laughs> but Very yeah, cool. uh, uh-huh. do I do we want to list yeah. off the rest of mine? Okay. Yeah. What are the rest? What are your other picks? Okay, so my runners up because Megalobox definitely holds the top. Uh, my runners up are SSSS Gridman, which is a hell of a title. Uh, But this is another celebratory title that uh, kind of, uh, if you've ever watched Ultraman or have ever heard of Ultraman, this is kind of like a spin-off series where Gridman is a tokusatsu hero that just loves to fight kaiju and protect the Earth. And this show really goes into some crazy stuff. I don't want to spoil any of it because everyone should at least take a chance to get into it. Um... But it starts off very, it, it eases its viewers in with its opening episodes, but then once it knows that you're locked, it goes off into some crazy directions that I think are really cool. Mm. Yeah. This show, I'll always note for being the show that had CG that I didn't hate. Yes. It, this yes. Was like amazing yes. CG. <laughs> I agree. I mean, this one was one I co- totally slept on this season, and it wasn't until like, uh, I think like a couple of weeks ago, I actually jumped into it and started watching it. And man, it was, it's a great binge worthy show. Like I'm really glad I waited until it was all out before I started watching it because I just, I just couldn't stop. I literally could not stop watching the show. It was just <laughs> so fun. Yeah. And yep, definitely and watch out for auntie. <laughs> Such an amazing character. I love auntie. And then my last pick is Hina Matsuri. This is another one that a lot of us picked uh, and I get to talk about. Uh, but Hina Matsuri is basically, it's this, it, it, it has these sci-fi elements that it doesn't take seriously at all because it's just a big comedy at the end of the day uh, starring the three perfect girls. Hina, who is a brat who can't control her powers, who just leeches off of the Yakuza. And then there's Anzu, the sweetheart that we all love who grew up homeless and now is employed at a ramen shop and the best girl of all, the girl who can't say no, Hitomi, who always gets into trouble (laughs) no matter what she tries to do to avoid it. I think she was our pick for like best character of like 2019. She was so great. The girl who can't say no. And by the end of it, she became, like, a world-class businesswoman, a ex- exceptional bartender. Like, she's so phenomenal. She's so great. <laughs> but, yeah, those were my shows. Yeah. Yeah, those are all really good great. Yeah, I know they were on most of our lists as well. You just 
snap them up first. He knows Cole. probably the best comedy of the year, I would say. Like, out and out, funniest yeah. show. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so many memorable moments. Like, her just holding a funeral for Nita, even though he's not dead, and just welcoming <laughs> him home with that. <laughs> so great. That or her so student great. council speech, which was completely written by the Yakuza. And everyone thought, whoa, she's bringing up some good points. Please clap here. <laughs> <laughs> Please clap here. Was so... Iconic line, for sure. Well, cool. Great choices, Cole. Uh, Preston, what do you have? What are your uh, choices? So my first choice and my favorite anime of the year is What a Koei Love is Hard for an Otaku. Because it is, it is a rom-com, or mostly a... Uh, romance um about four people who work in a standard office building who also happen to be otaku and it's just so relatable like between all four of the main characters like the scenes that they're dealing with whether it's at work or like deciding oh wait i don't want people to know that uh i'm a like that i'm really really into um fujoshi and stuff like that like I was laughing along and I was laughing along with it, feeling sad along with it. And it just, we talked about it earlier. We had an episode where we discussed a show and each of us talked about how like we could relate to at least one, if not all of the characters on the show and each of their problems and seeing how they interact and deal with this relate with their relationships was very enjoyable for me. Yeah, completely yeah. agree. Like, before this even came out, me and you, Preston, we were both, like, really enjoying the manga at the time. And so mm -hmm. when the anime came out, I, both of us really enjoyed that it was, like, not just a faithful adaptation, but really added new elements to those manga panels and really mm -hmm. brought them to life. Yeah. yeah it, it was... Like, I ended up buying all of the manga volumes after this was done because I just wanted no. more of it. I have too yeah, many for series sure. I'm dedicated to. <laughs> <laughs> There's only three volumes, man. Only three volumes. And the fourth one Dude, I have the, I have the like Berserk Perfect Christmas. Editions on pre-order. That's a hundred bucks. <laughs> well, with that, at least, you know it is the Perfect Edition because the next volume isn't going to come out for another, like, ten years. Yeah, I can catch That's up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was a really good pick. Uh, it was a really good recommendation because that, again, was one that wasn't on my radar this year, and it became one of my favorites. Like it yeah. was so endearing, and there was exactly as you said, the characters were all so relatable, not just to ourselves, but to people we know. And it just it it was just such a great like unwind. Let's just watch and just enjoy something for a change kind of show, which mm -hmm. was awesome. I only wish yeah. there was more episodes because it's only eleven episodes long, and I'm like, please, I need more. I need yeah. more wholesomeness injected into my life. I just like that it was such a genuine otaku lifestyle. Like yeah. very often, it, they they like to play it up, and I'm like, that's not how people watching anime always act. Yeah, but those <laughs> yeah. two were very specific. I'm like, yeah, I have done this. Oh, it, but no. also, and showing it as like adults. I exactly. love the fact that they were showing it as these are what adults who are who were otaku as kids be, were ones as teenagers. Now this is how they live it as an adult lifestyle, exactly. and that, I guess. That's the biggest relatable point for all of us, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That was my first pick. Now, my runners up are two pretty different shows. First runner up is Golden Kamui, which I had been, up until the show premiered, I had been evangelizing to so many people because I read the <laughs> manga, loved it. I absolutely loved the manga so much. And I don't think that the show reaches the high qualities of the. Uh, manga but it's still a very good show it's about um various groups of people in hokkaido uh searching for a lost um cash of cash of gold and their interactions and it's such a buck wild show because you could divide it into three parts you could divide it into uh hard you could divide it into absolutely brutal action um mm. very strange comedy and then just extremely well animated cooking scenes. Like they go nuts <laughs> for the cooking scenes in here. Yeah, I very much saw this as a food anime. <laughs> because of the focus <laughs> on all the different meals that they eat. Oh god. Was... Even just the miso. 
like, yeah, there's the running joke about Miso looks like poop. And they are like, <laughs> yeah, I'd like some more poop, please. But even outside of that, it's like, oh, how are we going to catch the squirrel? What's the most delicious part of the squirrel? The brain. Here, have some brain. Eat and the, the, brain. the whole, all that cheat cheat that that part and and how that just kept going throughout the entire series it was always a call back to the cheetah top part mm -hmm. even like when they got into the second part of the the, the second season that happened throughout it mm -hmm. although i love this anime so much i just really felt that the second season jumped the shark so hard it was so weird but in a good way it just i just i felt like i was watching two almost totally different animes by the second season with a through line story it was really it's you gotta be prepared for that with this one but yeah. it's totally I, it's a great pick Preston that's one of my tops too well you just that is actually a good transition to my second runner up because you said like this jumped the shark so many times well <laughs> let me tell you about Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Golden Wind the fourth season <laughs> of the Jojo's Bizarre Adventure anime which really like don't watch this if you haven't watched any of the other seasons because the well, yeah, show is can't. insane. You cannot. You can't because you'll just be completely confused. First episode has a dude turning into a frog. If you have no idea what like the thing about what it's about, then you're just gonna be like, oh, this is this is weird. Like this is this is weird. Why would anyone watch this? It's yeah. Golden Wind is very much when they decided, hey, let's just be weird on purpose and see how, like, freaky we can get. Like, I always, <laughs> there's the famous scene, the torture dance scene, um, that takes place about seven, eight episodes in, which I can only briefly describe as um, the main characters stuck on a boat in the Mediterranean, torturing the severed head of an assassin who tried to kill him by positioning glasses so and injecting him with LSD so he's staring at the sun, then playing a knockoff <laughs> print song and dancing to it. It's synchronized dance to it. It's insane. And I love it. Because yeah, there are part... very like as a as like a shonen anime, like it has some very creative fights. Jojo's is known for that and the creative ways that they go about their powers. And it's just overlaid with this extremely surreal and punk aesthetic that i love yeah i was extremely glad that they were doing an, an, an anime adaptation for part five just because i tried reading it and i had no idea what was going on most of the time mm -hmm. there was no way to tell how some of those fights were going just because of how weird they were yeah like so part I, four i needed an anime adaptation for that Part 4, Diamond is Unbreakable, was like testing the boundaries of how crazy we could get, and then Araki decided with Part 5, let's just jump right in. You know, I don't even know what I'm <laughs> writing right now. I'm just listening to music and putting down words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to get worse, <laughs> too, because like <laughs> when we get to Part 6 and Part 7, yeah. <laughs> we go yeah, even but by then you know what you're in for. If True. you've been able to make it to Part 5, you know exactly what you're in for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, I have not actually seen this one, so I know this is my next big binge. It's just, there's so many episodes Yeah, you've got that I have to get through. Binge. It's a daunt. It's a daunt. Uh, daunting <laughs> task in, ahead of me, but cool, regardless. Anyway, Remington. Thank you, Preston. Uh, that was really good. What's yours, Remington? Yeah, so mine were two that I didn't really think would end up making my best of the year list. But I'm glad that they did. Uh, really? The first is Devilman Crybaby. Oh, which yeah. I, I wasn't sure about this one only because this had come out at the start of 2018. And it was the first anime that I was seeing that I knew was uh, at least worked on by Netflix. Like, it was licensed by them. So I wasn't sure what to expect at all. Plus, I knew Devilman was a really old story. And I wasn't sure how they were going to adapt that. But they did such a good job with it. Yeah. Like, this is yeah. very much just... This is the template of so many modern anime, but it still holds up to this day. Oh, and totally. I, I think that's such a good... Like, the way they showed it in such a unique way, and even the way that they referenced the original series with the theme song, they yeah. did such a good job with this. Like, Absolutely. everything about it is so unique. And The only... Oh, go ahead. No, 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 go, go. No, I was going to say, my only complaint about the whole thing is there there was a bit of a jar towards the end of the, 
the se- uh, the end of the series here that uh, we did notice the two episodes kind of uh, – not the two episodes, but the two studios behind it. There was a noticeable mm. difference in the animation style. It was not a bad thing, though. That's, that's a really hard thing to kind of overcome. Yeah. Um, it just – it made sense in the way that those transitions – that they transitioned into each other. And it – I, I only wish that we got to see like the quality of the fight scenes toward the end at closer, a little bit further on to the beginning, but it also made for a really good climax with those fight scenes. So it was just like, it's a really tough call. Do, did I want to see it all the way through or was it worth, like, it was a good thing to kind of like keep in the, keep in their hat and pull out as like a, this is my trump card kind of thing. So yeah. It was I mean, really it cool. was a, it was a very climactic finish for that whole, that giant fight and everything that oh, went along with it but so good I'm, I'm just so glad that that got animated because i never thought i would see a proper adaptation of it and that was that's easily the best way to view devil man so yeah i i was really happy about that one yeah because usually with devil man especially if they try and bring back the property it's usually exploring like a different side story or throwing in yeah. different gona guy characters to breathe some like new life into it but devil yeah they always man... try to make it a whole universe yeah like <laughs> hey it's it's devil man versus hades with great mazinger <laughs> and it's like why why does this need to exist <laughs> i but... don't know the story of devil man yet <laughs> 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 who is he but yeah they they definitely treated like the source material with a lot of respect and even though they shortened a lot of it the, the core story mm-hmm. that they told there they did a great job with yeah yeah, they, they, they really managed to shrink it down to fit those 12 episodes, because I wasn't really sure how they would do it. Yeah. But it worked. It worked, and it, it and it's gotten the reputation that I think it deserves, so that makes me really happy. Yeah, for sure. Um, But yeah, my second pick is even less expected to me, <laughs> because it, it fits in with the crowd of anime that I normally don't like, and that's the whole isekai genre, basically. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I've grown to hate that genre so much. Oh really? But... I wonder why. <laughs> I mean, I wonder. We'll, we'll probably get to that when we talk about the worst animus. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> but um, that time I got reincarnated as a slime. I I was expecting the worst of it. I've heard good things. I've heard so many good things, and I just figured, okay, it might be one of those overrated series. But there's something so charming about this series. <laughs> Just, uh, it's it's just about this typical, like, 32, 34-year-old man who gets killed and reincarnated as a slime. Hit by a truck! In another world. Oh, actually, he might not have been hit <laughs> no. by a truck, but... Uh, no, he was stabbed. Uh, no, he got stabbed. He got yeah, stabbed. He was stabbed. Uh, <laughs> and then hit by a truck. Airtime. Getting hit by a truck is very Konosuba. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the difference here. <laughs> but, but no, I was expecting nothing out of this, but the world itself is so unique like there's so much lore that they didn't need to fit into it that i ended up appreciating it way more than i expected to like they'll just mention things about this like oh this is how certain weapons are made and each of them have unique effects and it's not details that i needed to know but i i like it and it makes me think that world's a lot more of a believable place rather than just a place for the main character to show that he's super strong all the time level 315 uh, like, exactly. Money. Yeah. yeah, like the fact that the anime didn't go in that direction, like I expected, it made it so much more enjoyable for me. Even if yeah. he did have a special ability that I think was a little too overpowered, it all everything else about it was so unique and charming to me. I was fine with it. I was able to get we're, it. Done. We were talking about this the other day, uh, Remington, and like <laughs> I, I, you know what? I'm I was really surprised. This is on your best of list. Because I, I love the first three episodes. They're so fantastic. It was awesome. And I found the the rest of the series kind of, it meandered a lot towards the end of the season that's currently available. But uh, you know what? I, I'm with you. It's There's something about it that just keeps coming back to, you keep coming back to it. It's just, it's really charming. Yeah. It doesn't seem to take itself overly seriously, like, you know, every other isekai that was out in 2018, because apparently this was the year of isekai anime. I <laughs> don't know why, but like it was, it's just, and the fact that it's just so ridiculous. He came back as a slime. 
Yeah. Like, it's well, just, I, I love it. I expected two things to either happen. I expected it to just be a generic adventure with a way too overly serious plot, or I expected a really generic hero. And it's neither of those things. It ended up becoming like this town builder. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, okay, <laughs> that's this, exactly right. this is not what I was expecting from the series at all. And that's why I was enjoying it. I was just like, they're just founding a nation. That's that's way more enjoyable to me. Yeah, it's like uh it's 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 like a way better version of Overlord. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. how I see it. Like <laughs> I don't know why. Like the cat but I love and you said you, yes he is like way too overpowered with that that one skill, but honestly I think that's what makes the whole thing because they're doing a really good job of creating the tension. Like you never really know because he, they've already created a rule that there's certain instances he can't actually use his full power because it's, there's real life consequences to like, oh, I could totally easily take everybody out in one shot. But if I do that, these people are going to get hurt and this place yeah. is going to get destroyed. And I like that they actually constructed that to limit it so that well, it made thing. it. Yeah. It's because they went with an adult character, he's not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> he doesn't make stupid choices. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, his actions are way more thought out. So I was just like, all right, he doesn't want to hurt people because he's not just thinking, I gotta beat the bad guy. He's like, no, how do I do this in a way that's not gonna draw too much attention and not gonna get everyone else hurt? It, I don't know. It, there's something about that series that's way better than I expected it to be. Yeah, I think I think we were all expecting the worst for it, and so because we didn't get the worst, it's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good choice. <laughs> but yeah, those those two are my choices for this year. Cool. All so right. Lisa. Well, yeah. So I picked a whole bunch that we did not watch together. I think some of you guys watched some of the ones that I'm recommending, but um, they're ones I didn't like. Didn't show up until the end of the like end of the year, which made me kind of feel like there, there, there was like stuff that was redeeming about 2018. So uh, <laughs> that in. Note. my number one choice for this year though, uh, was Rascal does not dream of bunny girl senpai. Mm. I didn't think I was going to like this one. Cause that's a uh, weird title. So, that makes no sense. Exactly. <laughs> and I just figured it was just going to be a really crappy harem. It, it is a bit harem-y. It totally is a harem and to a point with it, but it's not like a harem in the typical sense where it's like everyone loves this main character and everyone's trying to just get in his pants and all that kind of stuff. It, it actually did it in a kind of intelligent way. So essentially the story is uh, this, there's a phenomenon in the world that's created uh, called, uh, I think it was called teenage syndrome, where things that have aff affected the people, these teenagers emotionally, uh, have manifested in a physical consequence in the world. So our main character, his, uh, he was bullied uh, as a kid because of so the, his sister who inflicted, was inflicted with the syndrome. Um, and he started developing these horrible uh, scarring cuts on his chest and he was hospitalized. And it basically, because he was away for so long, everyone assumed he was, an, and he came back with these scars, everyone assumed he was a fight and totally destroyed his reputation for the rest of his high school. So he was basically a loner. And one day he's in the uh, library and he encounters this girl in a bunny suit who's just hanging around the library and no one seems to notice her. So he walks up and he's like, why are you in a bunny suit? He's like, Oh, I'm just here. And no one sees me. turns out she's invisible. She also has this syndrome. And so it continues. Basically he, you know, there is obviously love interest. He falls in love with this girl and that not to give away too much more in the story. It goes through this guy encountering other people throughout the series as, as they are also enduring this syndrome. Um, but the best part about this whole series, it is an interesting storyline. Like there are really interesting ways that these stories are shaped, but it, it's not interesting in the story itself. Like they're, they're very, very simple plots to each one of these stories. It's the emotional investment and the, like the in introspection that each character has that they explore over the course of a three of three, uh, three episode arcs for each character that they're kind of looking into. But the best part is the banter between the main character and his love interest. It's just so natural and witty and none of this like, 
one thing that's very kind of typical in a love anime and all of you guys who are really into the romance ones will know what I'm talking about. It's the fact that there's people that are, it's like one extreme, like wild character and one extremely like straight man. Who's like, what all the time. This it's, they're so even in terms of wit that the lines that go back and forth are quick and tight and really entertaining. And that just makes the series phenomenal in my like best written series I've seen all year. Mm. Um, yeah, you told me about that series the other night, so I watched mm. the first couple of episodes, and the dialogue was amazing between it characters. It was so good! Like, <laughs> there were so many unique moments. I loved when, even in the beginning of the episode, when uh, the main guy meets the girl, he's, like, telling her his name, and he's just like, oh, the first name means this, and the last name means this. And then she's like, my name's Mai, the first name means Mai. <laughs> 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 I was like, okay. <laughs> and I, I love the fact that they flesh her out as such a professional character. Cause she's an act. She's actually a very famous actress. Yeah. Uh, and that I'm not gonna go into more details because that actually affects that. That's part of the syndrome that she's going through. But she, her, that professional character, ma- which matured her beyond like a high school student. Um, and the fact that she's like a year older than him too, uh, mm. like is carried out throughout the series so that it's it's almost like there's adults in the room during the entire show, which is really great. Yeah, yeah. Because everybody's so calm the way they talk, like nobody overreacts to anything. It's yeah. just regular conversation on the train or walking to school or whatever they're doing. Exactly. Nothing but feels the- like over, overly necessary or whatever. It- Exactly. And when there are characters later on, you so you probably haven't gotten this far yet, Remington, but later on in the series, we do get those typical, like, the anime trope girls mm. characters that do come out. It's jarring, but in an appropriate sense. Like, it's a good, like, you can see, okay, this is what maturity looks like, and this is what ridiculous looks like, and it it doesn't, like, displace mm. the, the what they've created in terms of the dialogue the whole way through. Um, it just kind of makes that character actually stand out and not be like, oh, I'm bored because I've seen this trope a million times. It's like, okay, that trope actually can be appropriate in like the certain settings as long and not overdone. And like the shock that the trope is trying to aim for in every other anime actually is achieved in this. So I thought it was kind of cool. But yeah, uh, right yeah. now, I think I've only ever seen immaturity in like yeah. the main character's little sister. And I'm just yeah. like, oh, you're you're a typical harem character. But even then, they have her shyness, which feels natural enough. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I can believe her as just as a real little sister, not not just the creepy anime little sister. Just to redeem her, just and to keep this in your mind as you're watching it, they really that is important to see at the beginning because mm. of how it's because of what happens towards the end. I'm not gonna say more because that's like, like a big, a big, big, big thing. But like, it's it's great that you picked up on that because by the end of it, it's a really there's a really interesting shift uh, for interesting reasons, and it's really like totally recommend it if you haven't watched it yet. You absolutely need to. Yeah, but, I'm looking forward to continuing that one. Yeah, for sure. Um, I guess so. My runners up uh, were other ones that I just sort of like picked up just randomly i'm like okay this looks like a thing and i need time to kill uh that actually turned out to be really good and then uh so run like the wind uh another uh older character anime which happens a lot this year which is awesome uh cause normally we're used to our high school settings this one was set, was set in college um and it's uh this guy who used to run and has no money, no scholarship at the school he's at. He's not really at a top tier school, school or anything like that. He seemed to just sort of be floating by. Um, ends up in this uh, dormitory, I guess, uh, full of a whole bunch of other college dudes. It's a ramshackle shack. Um, but the way he ends up in it is he's running away from a store he's clearly stolen from because the the store manager's coming after him. But he's super fast, so he's able to get away from him. And this other guy runs beside, ride, rides up beside him on his bicycle and says, "Hey, you want you like to run?" And the guy's like, "What? <laughs> you see what's going on?" He's like, "I just stole something." He just keeps running. And he's like, "What the hell with this guy?" And he's like, "No, do you like to run?" And so that conversation led uh, our main character to be brought to the dormitory with this collection of just sort of not the top kind of guys 
that you want to like you'd expect from university one's graduated he graduated law school and decided this, this is he's going to take a year off to just you know mess around and do whatever he feels like because i worked hard i deserve this another one is a guy who is trying desperately to in his final year to go job uh, go through job interviews and failing miserably because all he does is watch game shows Another one, and another one's a computer programmer. Another one is a sh almost shut-in otaku, uh, like that. This like standard stereotypical character, um, an exchange student from Nigeria who's trying really hard to be his best. So our the person who brought our main character on board has established this rule that apparently they all signed when they signed on to be in the storm that they all have to be part of the cross country team for the school because as it turns out the storm used to be the headquarters for that and unless they want to leave the dormitory so their home they have to be part of this cross country team so it turns it it takes all of these people who don't have any experience running except for our main character who used to be a pro star as it turns out and shapes them into a cross-country team but it treats it exactly the way somebody who's never exercised in their life would react to the whole thing with every one of these characters <laughs> they hate it there's they don't want to do it it's not your typical sports anime anime where everyone gets on board and the fact that it, it's got that wonderful connect like everyone's kind of butting heads about the whole thing throughout the series makes it like really refreshing to see kind of a mature ver look at the sports anime so it's, it's totally awesome. So it's just There's Japanese boys things. looking at body break for the first time. But they're okay, not. So, so the... hey, <laughs> hold on, hold on. They're not pretty boys. That's the thing. None oh, of them are pretty boys. Love. This I is think a I should have read with that. This but... is a yeah. You just threw a wrench into okay, it. Okay, so you just yeah. spent like yeah. four minutes describing the plot to this, and I'm like, okay, this sounds like a sports anime. Lead with the not pretty boys next time. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> just yeah. Yeah. plot summary by like three minutes, and just they, know, they have no pretty boys, and like they hate their what they're doing. And yeah, the one time, time I want Lisa to, to talk wrong. about the boys. <laughs> you know what, guys? You know what? I, not everything I watch is a boy anime. I'm just going to put that out there. Sometimes they're sword to her boys. <laughs> Sometimes they're sword to her boys. <laughs> Sometimes they're, you know, idols who are boys. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but no, that, that's what, it, it kept it really refreshing. And I really, like, highly recommend this one. It's really good. And so my last one, it is a boy anime. It's not supposed to be a boy anime. There are girls in this, but they're ignored. <laughs> Wait, are they hey. boys who are bows? Yes, they're boys. No! All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you remember how we were watching, uh, what was it called? How, how Kuro Receive? Uh, Receive, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Kind of this is a similar uh, anime in the sense that it, it's uh, looking at this guy who used to be a really into uh, archery uh, as, a, as a kid. He was a like, really high-level um, kind of prodigy as, at the sport. And then um, all of a sudden he got uh, he he got tar it's called some target target fear or target panic and he forgot how to do it. So his friend in high school decided he's gonna you know get him to come out to the team. All right, what makes this kind of stand apart is that it's uh, there's a clear struggle and at the beginning they're trying to fix him, but then it turns it shifts to like let's not fix the teammate, let's just fix ourselves first kind of thing. Um, and it's just got a really nice calm serenity to the whole anime um, with a lot of really great lines, really great thoughts about it. But it, it's, it takes the whole tone of like what this particular discipline of, of um, martial arts is like. It looks very, it's very calming to watch. So it's a really good palate cleanser for a lot of like stressful days. You watch this anime. It's really great. <laughs> so it isn't like Hanabato where it has like those big moments of like darkness and abuse. It does. Ha it has really big moments because there's there's some real darkness that are coming that's coming out. But it's not big moments of darkness in terms of like you're going to be shocked about the whole thing. It's it treats it in almost like a very like abstract way the way it comes out if that makes any kind of sense so you're not like in hanabata when it was everyone was like oh my god this is horrible and, my, and and there's violent reactions to it this one there it's an it's more of an it's very internal like not just to the person just dealing with it but the whole group and there's an like actual like conversation about it uh, like in in like a realistic portrayal of like in terms of how like you know a 15 or 16 year old person would handle it 
So it's kind of, it's neat. Hmm. So I recommend it. No I wouldn't relate it at all to Harukana Receive, just because there are boys involved. <laughs> 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 Boys don't exist there are anymore. girls in the team. We just don't hear their story, and I have, for the life of me, have not figured out why. Because they're just as important part of the team. But I did not. In, I did not look at this to be a boys anime when I first picked it up. It turned into one, and I'm just like, all right, here we go, boys anime. And you know what, guys? Forget you. I gotta talk about my boy animes once in a while. She has no shame. <laughs> no shame. But this one's actually good, so I highly recommend this one. Um, yeah, that's my picks. All right. All right, guys. So I think we'll wrap up the best of for this year. Um, and uh, listeners can tune in next week to hear our worst of the season, because I think we're going to have a lot to say about that one. Unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was such a bad year, guys. Bring on the trash. Oh God! <laughs> Look, that's not being that's being too kind. Most of the, like the shows that we're picking are like there's a trash can, and then next to it's a dumpster fire, and then next to it are the shows, <laughs> which are like a landfill that has been horrifically corrupted by acid rain and is also on fire. Yeah, I think hey, that's I, even I, putting it mildly. That's a little mild. <laughs> I was expecting you to say worse. Look, look, like, oh man, you'll, listeners, <laughs> listeners, you'll understand why I have such strong words next week. Oh man, yeah. Yeah, so you're going to want to tune into that one. So thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, you can tune into CG Magazine, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcast app to listen to the continuing adventures of the Anime Research Society, brought to you by CG Magazine and the Pixels and in Ink podcast. Have a question or comment for the society? Tweet at us at A underscore R underscore society, or find us all on Twitter. Cole, what's your Twitter? At Kaiser underscore Watson. And Preston? At Preston Doza, spelled D-O-Z-S-A. And Remington? At Remington Joseph. And I'm at Lisa Awesome with no E's. Uh, you can leave a comment at CG Magazine. At, you can find them at cgmagonline.com. Want more from CG Magazine and Pixels and Ink? Follow us on Twitter at CG Mag Online, on Facebook at CG Magazine, on Instagram at CG Magazine, and on YouTube under CG Magazine. For From everyone here at the Anime Research Society, happy researching. <laughs>